flying cruise in, you meet some very interesting people. And I'm standing with Paul Weaver. And Paul, we just saw you get shot down. Yes, that's a fact. I have a friend on the ground that has an AK-47 uh, semi-automatic rifle. It's converted over to a Lewis submachine gun, and he just shot me out of the air. Isn't that a shame? <laughs> well, that was very interesting. And here you are. You're dressed in a World War I uniform. Tell us about the uniform and this airplane. Well, we became interested in World War I flight uh, at the Air Force Museum in Dayton, Ohio a few years ago when the Great War Association sponsored a World War I fly-in. And uh, very many people are interested in World War I replica aircraft, and um, I became interested when I saw them fly down there at the museum. So we searched around and we located uh, this Bowers B-1 Flybaby biplane, which is replicated to look like an SE-5, which was built in about 1916, 1917, and flew in World War I uh, on the English side. Well, in World War I, when these guys flew airplanes, it was rather personal, wasn't it? Uh, yes, it was. Um, when uh, airplanes first started out in uh, World War I, they were used for observation to uh, track enemy, enemy movement on the other side of uh, lines of demarcation. And uh, gradually, airplanes came into their own as fighting machinery. Uh, they began to first shoot with hand pistols and rifles, and gradually they began to mount machine guns on airplanes and use them. They were the first fighter planes that we knew, and they were a great military tactical weapon. Uh, the first aircraft, uh, they had the machine guns mounted up on top of the wing because they had trouble with uh, bullets going through the propeller, and uh, it was much more advantageous to have the machine gun right in front of the pilot, much easier to aim, but uh, the, uh, the propellers kept breaking off. And then the Germans came out with an idea that they could time the engine to the gun and thus shoot through the arc of the propeller when the propeller was not there. And then uh, one of the airplanes crashed behind enemy lines. The uh, English and French discovered their secret and they all started manufacturing that interrupter gear then. Well, this is a very interesting airplane. Now, you have the, the paint scheme is a replica. Tell us a little bit more about that. Uh, the paint scheme is a replica from an SE-5. It has uh, markings from the 85th Aero Squadron, which flew in uh, England. And um, it says Newport on the tail, but uh, it is spelled differently than the manufactured aircraft of Newport from France. Uh, the townships actually would purchase or put up money to buy these airplanes uh, for the early Air Force in England and they would write the name of the little township and county on the side of the airplane and hence this one is uh, uh, supplied by uh, the Newport Township uh, in Fife, Scotland and uh, that's why the name appears on the airplane. Well it's really interesting we just en well we enjoyed seeing you get shot down Paul. Now you have an 85 horsepower Continental when you're cruising what speed? We cruise about 85 to 90 miles per hour uh, when we uh, are about 2,300 RPMs. Well, we're looking forward to you coming to the next fly-in cruise-in. Folks can come out here and see you, your uniform, and this, air this great airplane. Well, it's friendly territory over there. We were there last year in an Aranka 7AC, much like the type that you fly, uh -huh. and we felt very welcome. And uh, we really appreciate uh, the community turning out to support, I believe, the band is uh, going to um, perform the meal again and it was a great uh, breakfast and uh, we're looking forward to being there. Well, we appreciate that, Paul. And I'll tell you, we'll see if we can get the police out there and make sure this don't happen at the flying cruise end. Well, if I get shot down, that won't be too bad as long as it's as long as it's friendly. Okay, thank you, Paul. Thank you.